Hey, in today's English lesson, I am going to teach you five English expressions you must know in order to sound like a native English speaker. Are you ready? Well then, I'm teacher Tiffany. Let's jump right in. The very first English expression you must know is to catch up with. To catch up with. Now, as you listen to the story, see if you can guess the meaning of the expression to catch up with. It was their high school reunion. It had been 20 years since the last time they spent time together and they were excited to see each other, talk about their families, take pictures and catch up with each other. They were having a wonderful time reminiscing about high school and talking about everything that had happened over the last 20 years. They were catching up with each other, but in the midst of their conversations, Barbara, one of the friends said, Hey guys, have you all heard from Brian? And they all said, man, no, we haven't heard from Brian in years either. And Barbara said, man, I would love to catch up with Brian. When we were in high school, we always hung out with each other, but I haven't been able to get in contact with him for years. And as Barbara was speaking, guess who walked up behind her? Brian. Brian tapped her on the shoulder and said, Hey, Barbara, how are you doing? Barbara screamed, Brian, you're here. And she gave him a big hug. And he said, you know, Barbara, I'm looking forward to catching up with you as well. Do you know the meaning? Could you guess the meaning of the expression to catch up with? Well, let me tell you the meaning. So the expression to catch up with, it means to speak to someone whom one has not seen for some time or for a long time in order to find out what they've been doing. Just like Barbara in the story missed speaking to Brian. She wanted to catch up with Brian to find out what he had been doing over the last 20 years. Makes sense, right? Now, let me give you some example sentences that will help you use this in real life. Sentence number one, it's always great to catch up with old friends, just like the high school friends were catching up with each other during their reunion. So again, it's always great to catch up with old friends. Next, Samantha left to go catch up with some old friends from college. She wanted to catch up with her friends to find out what they had been doing. And finally, the third one, High school reunions, like our story, are great ways for old friends and classmates to catch up with each other. All right, so makes sense. You can now use this expression to catch up with. Very good. Now, the next expression is also very important. The next expression is to get ripped off by. To get ripped off by by now, as you listen to the story, see if you again can guess the meaning of the expression to get ripped off by it was their very first date. They were excited to be going out to a restaurant together and she was holding her flowers excited because she had liked him for a long time and he was looking forward to taking her to his favorite restaurant. So they finally arrived and he, he took her purse and he took the flowers and said, Hey, I, I'll let you sit down first. And he let her sit down and <coughs> he cleared his throat and said, um, <coughs> uh, I really have liked you for a long time. And she said, I've liked you too. And they proceeded to talk for a long time after they ordered their food and they were having a wonderful time together. The food came and she enjoyed her meal and he enjoyed his meal, but then the bill came. Now it was his favorite restaurant. So he knew the majority of the prices, but when the waiter brought the bill, he looked at it and something was wrong. He didn't want to reveal that the bill looked a little bit off. It didn't look correct, but he knew something was wrong and he looked at the waiter and the waiter kind of had a smirk on his face. He said, this is your bill, sir. But the young man, he didn't want to be embarrassed in front of the young lady he had invited out to dinner. So he took out his card 
and he gave it to the waiter. And the waiter said, thank you. The waiter took the bill back with his card and uh, wrung his card and swiped his card. And then he brought it back to the young man and said, thank you, sir. So the young man put his card back in his wallet, but the, the young girl could tell something was wrong. And she said, are, are you okay? He said, I I'm fine. Let's just go. So she picked up her flowers. She picked up her purse and she followed him outside of the restaurant and they went to find their bikes. And she said, something is wrong. He said, I just got ripped off. She said, what do you mean? The, the food was great. I don't understand. He said, I just got ripped off. The waiter charged me much more than was on than what was on the menu. She said, really? Why didn't you say anything? He said, well, honestly, I, I didn't want to cause a scene or make a scene in the restaurant, but I know he charged me more than I should have been charged. And I really got ripped off. And the young lady said, listen, the meal was great. The company was great but I don't like that you got ripped off. Let's walk back in the restaurant and talk to the manager. And the young man looked at her and said, you'd be okay with that. She said, listen, you're a great guy. You don't deserve to get ripped off. And he smiled and said, man, I like you even more. And they walked back into the restaurant and spoke with the manager and told the manager that they had gotten ripped off and the manager took care of everything. Do you know the meaning of the expression? <laughs> Come on, get ripped off. You got it. Now the expression get ripped off. It means to cheat someone by charging them too much for something. Just like the waiter charged the young man more than he should have been charged. Again, in English, we say to get ripped off by. So to cheat someone by charging them too much. Now I want to give you some example sentences using this expression. Here we go. The first example sentence, the man at the kiosk ripped me off by charging me too much for something that broke so easily. Sentence number two, the restaurant is a ripoff because its price is over the moon with mediocre taste. The food's not even that good. Now sentence number three. Concession stands are a huge ripoff due to the quality of food and snacks you could get for the same price elsewhere. Again, in English, we say to get ripped off by. So it makes sense, right? Now we're going to move on to our third expression, but I want to let you know something. If you're enjoying this lesson, if you're enjoying the stories that go along with the expressions, you'll really like my English vocabulary with Tiffany channel. That's right. Every single day of the week, except for Saturday, I teach an English lesson. I tell stories and I also help you understand how to pronounce the English vocabulary words. So if you want to improve your English vocabulary and learn a new word every day, go to English vocabulary with Tiffany or hit the link in the description and you can watch new videos every single day. So let's keep moving on to expression number three. Now the third expression is to go for a ride, to go for a ride. Now, as you listen to the story, once again, see if you can guess the meaning of this expression. They had been together for almost 40 years. They were high school sweethearts and they loved being together. And today they were going for a ride just like they did every Sunday at 9 AM. They would go for a ride down their favorite road and they look at the countryside and they see the animals and they would just talk about their life together. But today was just a little bit different. You see a few weeks prior, they had found out that the wife, had dementia. So in a few short months, she would start forgetting things, but her husband did not want her to forget about their Sunday rides. So he said, baby, listen, I know we got some bad news and I know in a few months things are going to change, but do you want to go for a ride? Do you want to go for a ride and see some new things and have our conversations like we used to? And she said, baby, yes, let's go for a ride. So they went out to the car, got in, and they went for their ride. 
Do you know the meaning? You know it exactly. So here's the definition of the expression to go for a ride. It literally just means to go for a brief leisurely outing as in a car or a motorcycle. Again, just a brief ride, just like the older couple wanted to go out and look at the countryside like they did every Sunday at 9 a.m. Again, in English, we say to go for a ride, a brief, leisurely, relaxing outing in a car or on a motorcycle. Now, let me give you some example sentences to help you use this in real life. Jenny just got a new car for her birthday. So I think we're going to go for a ride after school. Think about how exciting it would be to go for a ride after school in your friend's new car. Jenny just got a new car for her birthday. So I think we're going to go for a ride after school. Here's the second example sentence. My parents and I got into an argument. So I left for a ride to cool off. This individual was angry with his or her parents. So he or she needed to go for a ride, take a leisurely ride in his or her car to relax or cool off. In English, we say go for a ride. And third on Sundays, like the couple, I like to go for a ride on my bike around town. Again, on Sundays, I like to go for a ride on my bike around town. Makes sense, right? The third expression, again, a commonly used expression to go for a ride. All right, now let's move on to expression number four. This expression you must also know. The fourth expression is to fall apart, to fall apart. Now, as you listen to this story, try to guess the meaning of the expression to fall apart. It was a Friday afternoon and Caroline was sitting with her friends, telling them what had happened between her and Mark. You see, Caroline and Mark had been together for a long time. They had been high school sweethearts and now they were in college. But Caroline said that her and Mike, her and Mark were breaking up and she totally fell apart. She loved Mark. She didn't want to break up with Mark, but unfortunately things just weren't working out. And her friends were standing around her trying to encourage her saying that, listen, you are an amazing person, Caroline. Don't worry. You'll find another guy. But as Caroline was falling apart and, and crying and saying how much she loved Mark, her phone rang. As she picked up the phone, she looked and she saw that it was Mark. She said, hello sniffling. Mark said, Caroline, are you okay? She said, I'm fine, Mark. How are you? He said, Caroline, I've been falling apart all day. I miss you so much. Can we please work this out? And suddenly a smile came across Caroline's face. She said, Mark, I love you too. Let's work it out. And she hung up the phone and suddenly another smile came across her face and she told her friends, Thank you so much for your comfort, but we're going to work it out. She wasn't falling apart anymore. Did you guess the meaning? I think you did. Now falling apart to fall apart just means to lose one's capacity to cope. All of a sudden, as Caroline was telling the story, she started crying and talking about what was happening between her and Mark. She fell apart. She couldn't cope with the sadness anymore. In English, we say to fall apart. So let me give you a few example sentences. Here we go. The first one, knowing how the groom is, their marriage is likely to fall apart. Again, they're not going to be able to cope. They're both going to quit again. One more time, knowing how the groom is, their marriage is likely to fall apart. Sentence number two, I was really close with my dad. And I started to fall apart after his death. I couldn't cope with life. I was crying. I was distraught. I couldn't cope. I started to fall apart after his death. And number three, I was really falling apart during the breakup between my fiance and me. 
similar to Caroline and Mark's situation before they decided to come back together. Again, I was really falling apart during the breakup between my fiance and me. Makes sense, right? In English, we say to fall apart. Now, one more English expression that you must know. The fifth English expression that you must know in order to sound like a native English speaker is in denial, in denial. Now, as you listen to this story, just like the previous stories, I want you to try to guess the meaning of this expression in denial. He was leaving the office. He had been working there for about 10 years and he thought he was the best employee they ever had. He was kind of arrogant and so many of the employees didn't like him. So when he got the call from his manager telling him that he was fired, he could not believe it. He was completely in denial as he packed his bags and put his boxes together. You have got to be kidding me. They're firing me? No, I'm the best employee they've ever had. And as he was walking out the door, he was still in denial. He said, this has to be a joke. Look at all these employees. None of them are better than me. I am the best employee they've ever had. I know they're going to call me back tomorrow and say, oh, we're so sorry, Scott, please come back. This man was in denial. He could not believe that they would even think about firing him. Do you know the meaning? I think you got it. All right. In denial, another expression you need to know in denial means refusing to admit the truth or reality of something unpleasant. He got fired, but he didn't want to believe. He didn't want to understand the truth of the situation that he was being let go. He was in denial, refusing to admit the truth. So let me give you some example sentences for this expression. The first one, the patient came in to see the results and was immediately in denial. Couldn't believe what the doctor said. Number two, ever since the breakup, she's been in denial and sentence number three. My parents are in denial and they still make breakfast for my brother who recently passed away. They refuse to admit the truth that my brother is no longer alive. In English, we say in denial. Now, I hope you use each of these expressions at least one time today, and I'll talk to you next time. You still there? (laughs) <laughs> you know what time it is. It's story time. Hey, I said it's story time. <laughs> All right. So today I want to tell you a story about two of my favorite people. They're two of my closest friends, Janelli and Marvin. If you're watching this, I love you guys. So I met Janelli and Marvin when I was an English teacher in South Korea. We were all missionary English teachers and we loved our jobs, but we had many different assignments as English missionary teachers. So as time went on, we got closer. And I remember when I stopped working at the same Institute they were working at, they worked about maybe two hours from the Institute I was working at, but we still stayed in contact and we would see each other on the weekends. We went to the same, we went to the same church. So, Time went on, we got closer, we spent lots of time together, and at that time, I was in grad school. So I actually was a missionary English teacher, and I also was able to get a scholarship from the Korean government, and I was studying uh, oriental painting. So time moved on, years went by, and I was about to graduate from my program, still in South Korea. Now, Janelli and Marvin were also still in South Korea. But my graduation actually was, let's say, for example, in March, but their contract ended in February. So when the contract, their teaching contract ended, they would need to go back to America or come back to America. But then I told them, hey, guys, I'm graduating. They said, Tiff, when are you graduating? I said, in March. They said, oh, no, 
our contract ends in February, but we want to be there for you. So I said, oh, really? I said, hey, I understand if you can't stay, I get it. Like, you have to go back home. He said, no, Tiff, we'll figure something out. So the next week they contacted me and they said, Tiff, we want to stay for your graduation. We want to support you. Now, let me explain. They were finished with their contract. They could have went home early to see their family, but they decided to stay an extra week and a half simply because they wanted to support me and be there for my graduation. I will never forget that. And that really touched my heart. So I have many pictures of us being together at my graduation and I always appreciated them supporting me. And now my friend Janelle, she's actually in grad school. So I'm trying to support her as well. I'm looking forward to her graduation. And I just wanted to tell you guys this story because friends are important. And even when you haven't seen each other in a while, you can catch up with each other. Just like I am looking forward to catch up with Janelle and Marvin. I haven't seen them in a few years, but I'm looking forward to seeing them again. So hopefully you enjoyed the story of Janelle and Marvin taking the time to support me. And maybe you have a friend just like Janelle or Marvin that supports you as well. All right. I will talk to you next time. Have a wonderful day.